this is the Matt here and today I've got a video for you about how to capture artillery. If you didn't already know, you can capture the enemy's artillery if you're fighting against your own race, against another faction that's from your same race, or if you're high elves or dark elves, you can capture the other side's eagle claw bolt throwers because you have both have the same artillery. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain the different types of artillery and how they can be used. I'm also going to show the safe scumming or saving and reloading techniques that I use to test this stuff. Um, and you can also use those same techniques to actually guarantee that you'll capture artillery in your game. Um, I'm also going to just have some uh, tips about how you can go about increasing your chances of capturing the artillery, assuming that you're not going to save scum to um, you know, ensure that you do. Now, there are some rumors or myths about capturing artillery. I think just because the chance of capturing artillery is so low, people tend to sort of wonder and theorize about what might be affecting their chances. There's one particular kind of myth or fallacy that you need to wipe out the artillery crew of the enemy artillery in order to capture it, or that if you wipe out the artillery crew, it'll somehow increase your chances of capturing, capturing the artillery. Um, now, that was the sort of main point of this video, is just that I found out that that's not true. And I just wanted to share that for anyone else who, like me, had kind of just gotten into the habit of wiping out the enemy uh, crew on the off chance that that somehow helped your chances. Um, it doesn't. You don't need to wipe out the enemy crew. You've got the same sort of 10% chance of capturing the artillery regardless. Um, and in fact, it actually reduces your chances of capturing it because if you make an effort not to wipe out the enemy artillery crew, then when you win the battle and the enemy retreats, they'll still have that artillery there, if, assuming you don't capture it, which means that you can attack them again and beat them again and then again get another sort of 10% chance to capture the artillery. So just by knowing that thing that you don't need to wipe out the enemy crew, basically doubles your chances of capturing the enemy artillery. Now, just to give a quick overview of artillery, normally when you attack a walled settlement, you need to build siege equipment and then wait at least one turn for that siege equipment to be built before you can attack. If you've got artillery, you get the siege attacker trait and you can immediately attack a walled settlement on the same turn that you attack. Artillery pieces can be used to target enemy towers and destroy them. They can be used to outrange the enemy and then soften them up as they have to close the distance. You can hold down the ALT key while you have your artillery unit selected in order to manually target a specific location on the ground. I like to try to target the very back edge of the enemy infantry just to try to ensure there's no chance of hitting my own infantry. I always like to keep at least one artillery piece in every army just for the damaged by artillery leadership penalty. If you're trying to stack leadership debuffs like fear, uh, discouraged effect from flamers, uh, flanking, uh, missile fire from uh, your missile units, then you know you want that extra minus 10. And of course, some artillery like the grudge thrower or the mortar actually does area of effect damage. So in situations like this where the enemy infantry is packed up tightly together, that's gonna do a lot more damage and damage of course is gonna help break them faster. By pressing insert or the button in the bottom left of your screen, you can enter manual fire mode. This gives you a targeting reticule and lets you manually aim and fire the artillery piece. Um, this is, can be useful for firing through gateways or aiming at specific targets. Also, artillery normally has a minimum fire range and you can't target anything within that within that range. If you're in manual fire mode, however, using you know cannons or um, eagle claws, you can actually shoot at things within that range. Artillery units can also dismount or drop the artillery. This can be really useful because if you get caught out of position and your artillery is going to get charged, they can be very slow to maneuver the moving the artillery around. But if you drop the artillery, the crew can actually move quite nimbly. They won't run any faster, but they'll be able to turn around and get out of there faster. If you manage to use all of your artillery's ammunition or you're facing an enemy where the artillery is not really useful, you can actually drop the artillery as a bit of a makeshift barricade to disrupt the enemy infantry when they come in and slow them down a bit. In order to capture enemy artillery, you need to win a battle against an enemy that has an artillery piece that you can use, so it's with the same race as you basically, unless you're high elves or dark elves, they both use eagle claw bolt throwers. And you need to have a free slot in your army. If you've got a full stack of 20, then you won't be able to capture the artillery. Capturing an enemy artillery piece at any stage of the game is great. It's a free unit that fills a slot that you would otherwise have had empty. 
But in the early game, in the first few turns, if you can capture an artillery piece then, um, before you can actually recruit your own artillery, and possibly before you have any units that have the siege attacker trait, that's going to give you the ability to siege walled cities in one turn, um, and also use artillery for support on the battlefield, which is going to potentially change the complexion of your whole early campaign. Here is an example, I've got an Empire campaign playing as Karl Franz. On turn one, I have recruited an extra Lord from Altdorf. That'll allow us to capture Ubersreich on turn three. Also, because Karl Franz comes equipped with the Reichland Runefang, I'm unequipping that so that I don't get the plus five public order at the end of the turn, but then I'm immediately gonna re-equip it. That means that it'll come back at the start of next turn. So it won't be there when the game calculates public order, but then when I wanna use it in battle next turn, Carl Franz will have it back again. Turn two, move your second Lord into the forest and put them in ambush stance. Then using Carl Franz, destroy the enemy army and then follow up to take Gromberg. When you do, make sure you choose the Loot and Occupy option. That's going to give you an extra uh, minus 30 to public order. That's going to help you get your first rebellion on turn 4, which I think is the fastest that you can make the rebellion happen in Reichland. At the end of the turn, remember to unequip and re-equip Dragon Tooth again, just so you don't get the plus 5 public order. Turn three, move Karl Franz to reinforce, and then take Ubersreich with your second Lord. Again, make sure that you use the loot and occupy option so that you'll get the maximum public order penalty. Then on next turn, on turn four, you should trigger a rebellion. Now just so that you can make sure you can handle the rebellion, recruit three more units, and I like to also recruit an extra Lord from Altdorf as well, just to give you a bit more firepower. For general gameplay, I recommend that you don't save scum. You just sort of take your chances and see whether the rebel army spawns with a, an artillery piece in there. But if you want to, um, you know, for testing purposes, or if you want to play a particular campaign where for some reason you always start off with artillery, then you can actually save scum at this point. So you'll make a save before the end turn. Or if you're playing a legendary, you can um, end turn, allow the auto save to happen, and then uh, press escape to stop the game, and then go and make a backup of that auto save that you can later on manually reload. On turn four, attack the rebels. In this particular game, I was lucky enough for the rebels to spawn with a mortar. I was also lucky enough to capture the mortar with my first attempt at this battle. Now, that um, capture chance for that mortar is predetermined at this point. So if um, you were to save scum, so in this particular one I'm playing on legendary, so the game auto saves at the start of the battle here. So if I back up that save, then I could reload that save, be back at this point again, and choose either auto resolve or manual battle, doesn't matter, and I will always capture the mortar. I'll just go into a little bit more detail about the save scumming or the reloading to get different seeds and different outcomes um, for anyone who wants to test this out themselves. Now, if the army doesn't spawn with a mortar on turn four, um, and you've made a save or you've backed up your save from the end of turn three, then you co can go back to turn three, change some things, um, and then that will possibly change the outcome of what's going to happen on turn four, including what the enemy army will spawn with. So there's different things that you can change, but probably the easiest thing you can do is replace uh, one of your lords. If you change one of your lords and then in turn and the army spawns again with no mortars, then you can just go back, reload, this time replace two of your lords or replace three of your lords. Um, each time that should change it and give you a new seed and a new chance of getting mortars in the rebel army. Once you've been lucky enough to get a battle with an opponent that has a capturable artillery piece, you still only have a 10% chance to capture each artillery piece. It does seem like you have a separate 10% chance to capture each artillery piece on the field. Um, that's what I've been told that the game code says. Um, I haven't been able to test, uh, do enough tests to be able to 100% confirm that that's the way it works, but nothing I've seen in my tests has contradicted that. So I believe that's how it works. You have a 10% chance to capture each individual piece. So if there's four artillery pieces in the enemy army, for example, then you've got a higher chance that you'll get at least one, and you've got a chance that you might actually get two. If you've got an enemy army with an artillery piece that you want to capture and you want to ensure that you'll get it by saving and reloading, you can do that too. You need to make a manual save before you attack the enemy 
or if you're playing a legendary and you want to back up your saves, you will initiate the attack, at which point the game will make an auto save, and then you'll make a backup of that save. If you aren't successful in capturing the artillery in that battle, then finish resolving the battle, then reload your backed up save. This time, retreat from the battle, and then attack again. This um, retreating from the battle will mean that when you attack again, you'll get a slightly different result. You may still not capture the artillery. If you don't, um, reload your save again, then retreat from the battle, then attack, then retreat from the battle again, and then attack, and this time resolve the battle. If you don't get it at that time, reload. This time retreat three times, and then attack again. Each time you retreat one more time, and that will give you a different result in the battle until you finally capture the mortar. Now, in this battle in which you just managed to capture the artillery, it's sort of predetermined that you would always capture it in that battle no matter what happens in the battle. So, for example, if before you leave the battle resolution screen to go back to the main campaign map, if you'd back up your legendary save, which will be saved just before the battle, or if you'd make a, made a manual save just before that battle, after you'd retreated before you went back again, then you'll have a save with a sort of predetermined that you're about to capture the mortar. So you could go back and do that save, but play the battle out manually. And this time, make sure you don't wipe out all of the mortars and then you'll capture one of them and then the retreating army will still have the remaining mortars. So you can then wait till the next turn, attack again and perhaps capture one of the other mortars. There are a couple of different techniques that you can use when you're fighting manual battles to capture artillery. Um, unfortunately, in this particular battle, I wasn't really able to use any of them. Um, in this uh, this battle, I managed to spawn a rebel army with four mortars. I think they started with three, and then I let them recruit over the end turn, so they actually got an extra one. So facing um, four mortars with uh, unarmored free company militia is uh, is not too much fun. But um. What you can do, sometimes your free company can um, set up behind the enemy or to the side of the enemy if they sort of set up in towards one edge of the map. Um, and if you can attack from multiple sides, sometimes the enemy forces will kind of get confused and mill around trying to face different directions. And that can be really great in a fight like this because it'll mean you'll take less damage from their artillery. Um, unfortunately, in this, this particular battle, they set up dead center, so I couldn't get behind them. I had to just do a kind of frontal charge. Um, another thing that you can do is to try to get melee uh, infantry or melee cavalry into the actual artillery to kind of smother them. Sometimes if you can engage a, an artillery crew in melee, they'll actually stop firing. Now, they should do most of the time, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes they'll keep firing while some of their um, members of the unit are still, um, are still in combat. Ideally, you want to do the majority of your damage to the other units, not the artillery and um, sort of get that army losses, losses penalty um, as much as you can um, and then kind of just move near to the artillery with your other units um, so that they'll just kind of break by proximity of larger, um, stronger and faster other units. But that may not always be possible. So, uh, you know, failing that, just uh, charge the artillery, melee them down, just make sure that you pull you guys away and stop shooting at them before they get wiped out. You need them to um, have at least 10% of the original unit strength surviving, otherwise they will get deleted after the battle. You can see in this battle I actually did a pretty terrible job. I actually wiped out two of the enemy's um, mortars. Um, the third one that's wiped out there is the one that I actually captured. So whenever you capture one, it always shows up as being destroyed, even if you didn't, you know, hardly harm them at all. Um, so yeah, so one of them's captured. I accidentally wiped out two other ones, and then there's another one still remaining for me to um, attempt to capture next turn if I want to um, let them recover, or I could just attack again this turn and have another chance at, attacking, at uh, capturing it. So that's pretty much it. Um, the main takeaway is just don't wipe out the artillery crews. If you leave them alive, then you can let the enemy army recover over the end turn and then attack them again next turn and have another chance to capture the artillery. So it sort of at least doubles your chances to capture the artillery. Um, you can also potentially try to farm the fortresses like Helmgart that have artillery pieces in their garrison. Um, I assume that if you win against them, you have a chance of capturing the artillery again as well. Um, and the garrison will you know, respawn new artillery if you give them enough time. My original plan was to just cut together endless clips of me just fighting endless battles trying to capture mortars as the outro for this video. But uh, to be honest, there's just been so much editing already. This video has taken me like over a week to, to make and I just couldn't be...
couldn't face any more editing to make to make the outro so we're just going to go with some uh carl franz for the outro and um yeah i hope this video was uh useful to you and i hope uh, i hope it wasn't uh, i explained it clearly i will not rest until every accursed goblin lies burning on a fire